Hey guys, it's Yuta. So, I often say that anime characters don't speak like real life Japanese people, but what do I mean by that exactly? Today, I will give you the long answer. First, let me give you the bullet points. Many of these things also apply to cartoons in English, but some of them use language features of Japanese, so they may appear a bit subtle for English speakers. Let's get started. First, voice acting. This one's quite obvious because voice actors act. Take a look at these characters. <laughs> The voice actor behind these characters is Rie Takahashi. So let's see how she speaks naturally. I hope you can see the differences. When she speaks naturally, she uses different kinds of voices. She occasionally sounds a bit like Megumi, but she doesn't do it consistently. But when she's acting, she uses one type of voice for the character and she uses it consistently. And that also applies to cartoons. Nobody in real life consistently speaks like Eric Cartman. If there is a new girl at our school, we're not gonna start putting claims on her and getting in a big fight. But there might be some exceptions. Hayao Miyazaki is actually known for not hiring professional voice actors for some characters. Listen to this character from The Wind Rises. The character is played by none other than Hideaki Anno, the director of Evangelion. He's definitely not a voice actor and he doesn't act much. This is how he sounds naturally. And there's not a lot of difference. But this is just an exception, and people have mixed opinions about Miyazaki's practice. Many people think he should hire professional voice actors and make the characters sound like anime characters. People don't really want anime characters to sound like real life people. Next point information density and errors. Real life people don't always speak efficiently. When they speak naturally, they might repeat the same things, run out of things to say, or make mistakes. They may talk about irrelevant things for 20 minutes before they start talking about what they really want to say. Anime characters are not like that because if they were, you'd be bored. You want the story to move. You don't want to hear characters talk about tests for an entire episode. Fictional dialogues tend to be efficient to keep the story moving. But I noticed something interesting about English-speaking actors. They often repeat the same words to introduce a little bit of inefficiency. Oh, dad. Oh, what was that, Morty Jr.? Were you, were you gonna say dada? Instead of just saying, were you gonna say dada? He's saying, were you, were you gonna say dada? Repeating, were you. They do this to make it sound more natural. But anime characters are not like that. And in my opinion, it's because it's not their goal to sound like a real-life person. Anime characters want to sound like anime characters because that's what we look for in an anime character. Next, uncommon words and expressions. Anime characters often use words that real life people don't use very often. There's a lot of examples and one of the most common ones is Kisama, which is kind of like an insulting version of you. Joseph Joestar, Kisama. Kisama. You are watching, aren't you? This is a very typical anime word and there's so many examples. It's very unlikely that a real life person uses this word unless they are trying to act like an anime character. It can be quite insulting if you use it, but the chances are you will just end up sounding ridiculous because it's very anime-ish. Another common expression is yare yare, which can be translated as good grief. Yet another common one is ara ara, which is like oh dear, oh my. So if you constantly use them, you will probably end up sounding like a fictional character. Next point, colloquialism. 
Many anime characters use literary expressions when real life people are likely to use colloquial expressions. Let me give you an example. Good grief, that was bad. We've already seen yare yare, but monda is also a type of expression that is more common in fiction. I'm not a kid. Noda is actually a literary expression and it's more common in written Japanese. Ore no mise da. It's my bar. Using da is a literary way of ending a sentence. Real life people are likely to add sentence ending particles to make it sound more conversational. In this example, we might add yo and say ore no mise da yo. Or we can simply just say ore no mise. You can easily observe this if you listen to real life conversations. It's you know. <laughs> As you can see, they're using sentence ending particles like yo, ne, instead of ending sentences with da. With that in mind, I can actually rewrite this conversation in an anime way. I hope you can see that it sounds very anime-ish. It would be very weird if people in Terra's house spoke like this. Another common thing with anime characters is not using contracted forms when real life people are likely to use them. Captain Katsuragi and Dr. Akagi are waiting in the cage. She said, Matte irukara, but in real life, many people would say, Matte irukara, which is the contracted version. We may use the literary version in formal speeches, but in daily conversations, we are more likely to use the contracted version. And I think I can come up with something similar in cartoons in English. Let's think of this phrase Do you want to go out? How would you say this phrase? A lot of English speakers would use the contracted version wanna instead of want to. And they might not fully pronounce do you and say do you instead. So it's gonna be like do you wanna go out? Or they might completely remove do you and say wanna go out? But what if I say the full sentence without any contraction and enunciate each word clearly? So I say do you want to go out? Doesn't it sound a bit cartoonish? I can think of an example like this. I will be back soon, Morty. After I return to the others with this location, we will be back for your cleansing. That cloud thing is enunciating each word carefully and not using contractions. And I don't think many people constantly speak like this in real life unless they are trying to speak slowly. Next, levels of respectfulness. This is where things get more Japanese. We have different levels of respectfulness. There's many ways of categorizing the levels, but let's just use two to make things simple. We have keigo or respectful language and non keigo or plain language. We use keigo with people who are older or of a higher status and also with strangers. We use non keigo with people who are the same age or younger and also family members. It's easy to identify a keigo sentence because it usually has des, mas, their variations or other keigo words. Ashita ikimasu, I'll go tomorrow has mas in it, so it's keigo. Ashita iku, I'll go tomorrow doesn't have any keigo words, so it's not keigo. But anime characters don't always follow these social conventions. So if you speak like an anime character, there's a chance that you might end up sounding very rude or very weird. This often happens in a let's save the world or I'm gonna be the strongest person in the universe type of anime. Let me show you an example from Hunter Hunter. That's what he said. 
I'm a survivor of the Kota clan. In both cases, if this was real life, they both should be speaking Keigo because they are talking to somebody who is older than them. But in the anime, they are not speaking Keigo. Which is fine because it's an anime, but if you do that in real life, you will be super rude. And this goes the other way too. Some anime characters would sound excessively polite in real life. Megumin from Konosuba is such an example. Not only does she use Keigo with her former classmates, she also uses it with her little sister. Komeko, tadaima kaerimashita yo. I'm back, Komeko. This has mashita, so it's Keigo. This would be very weird in real life because in today's Japan, we just use non Keigo with our family members. Most of us wouldn't use Keigo with them, let alone younger siblings. But there's also a type of anime where characters tend to respect these conventions. High school sports anime are such examples. My name is Shoyo Hinata. I remember you very well. Here, they are not using Keiko because they are in the same grade. But with their senpai or higher grade students, they use Keigo. It's I'm small, but I can jump. They're using this mass, so they're using Keigo. And this is completely appropriate. With anime like this, you can easily guess each character's grade by listening to how they talk to each other. But these nuances are often lost in translation. So if you want to fully enjoy the original anime, you need to learn Japanese. And if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will teach you the kind of Japanese the Japanese people today actually speak, which can be different from the kind of Japanese that textbooks teach you. So click the link in the description and subscribe. Next, stereotypical or fictional speech patterns. Many anime characters use these speech patterns. One example of these is speaking like cats. In Japanese, cats say nya nya. So if you incorporate that into your speech, you will end up sounding like a cat. Instead of saying nani, you can say nani to sound like a cat. Take a look at this clip. Something like that. She inserts nya into her sentence. The standard Japanese version would be Sonna tokoro da. No real life Japanese person would consistently speak like this, unless they are doing it as a joke. Another common stereotypical speech pattern is old people's speech pattern. Basically using ja instead of da. That's one incredible corkscrew I see in the morning. Ja make it sound like a stereotypical old person. The standard Japanese version would be Again, real life elderly people don't speak like this. It seems like this speech pattern is based on a dialect. So maybe you can find a similar speech pattern somewhere, but as a way that elderly speak, this is completely fictional. These patterns are easy to recognize because they are completely fictional. But things become less black and white if there's a little bit of truth in it. For example, a lot of anime characters speak in a stereotypically feminine way. I already know it without you telling me. This wayo sounds feminine. Another example. Chance dawa? Now's my chance. Dawa sounds feminine. This feminine speech pattern is actually quite uncommon with real life people, especially young people. But you can't completely rule out the possibility that some women in some places might speak like this sometimes. 
I've actually seen one woman on the train who spoke like this. And it's a little bit more common with written essays. So this is not completely fictional. It's incredibly common in anime, but much, much less common in real life. But this stereotypically feminine speech pattern is quite easy to identify. There are other speech patterns that are more nuanced because it's a matter of frequency. A good example of this is using the question particle ka in a non kago sentence. Take a look at this. Yo, yo, Togashi. Kono ato jikan aru ka? Kono ato jikan aru ka? Do you have time after this? This is not a Keigo sentence, and he's using ka to ask a direct question. And this is not very common in real life. Using ka in a non Keigo sentence like this sounds quite abrupt and aggressive. Saying this in real life could make us uncomfortable, and even a textbook like Genki acknowledges this. Yet, this is very common in anime. Another example. Are you already done? Again, this is a non Keigo sentence, and he's using ka to ask a direct question, which sounds quite abrupt in real life. But I need to explain this more because ka would be perfectly fine with a Keigo sentence. If you say, Mo i n desu ka? that will be perfectly fine. And many people say this in real life. It's only with a non Keigo sentence that it can sound abrupt. So in real life, most people would say something like, Mo i i or Mo i i no, but non Keigo question ka is so common in anime and other fictional works, it's almost like standard fictional Japanese. But there's more layers to this because some people in real life might say this sometimes. I've actually known somebody who used this non Keigo question ka in real life. So you can't really say nobody speaks like this. Some people do sometimes. It's just in terms of frequency, it's much, much more common in anime and much less common in real life. And types of people who wouldn't use this in real life use it in anime. And it's tricky to explain because it's highly contextual. <laughs> There's many expressions like this, but let me give you a couple of more examples. Kai and Dai. <laughs> Really? Doko ni kundai? Where are you going? Real life teenagers are unlikely to use these expressions. But again, you might be able to find some Japanese people who use them sometimes. So it's a matter of context and frequency. So many people use them in anime in so many situations, but not so much in real life. And because this is not black and white, many Japanese people are actually not aware of these differences. When I asked them to write natural conversations in Japanese, many people use these expressions even though they don't use them themselves and they don't really know people who use them. But they hear fictional characters use these expressions all the time, so they think that they also use them. Not everybody is aware of how they speak Japanese exactly in real life. I've just always paid attention to this kind of stuff and I sometimes analyze how Japanese people speak exactly using my interview videos. But I need to emphasize that it's not a bad thing that anime characters don't speak like real life Japanese people. It's simply not their premise. They don't necessarily try to speak like real life people and anime fans don't want them to speak like real life people either. What if Kagura doesn't have her accent and speaks standard Japanese? She wouldn't be as interesting as she is. Imagine all the characters in Monogatari series just speak standard Japanese. That would be kind of boring. Using a wide variety of speech patterns makes anime characters interesting. But a lot of these nuances are lost in translation, and if you're learning Japanese, it's better to understand how real life Japanese people speak. And if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will teach you exactly that. So click the link and subscribe to my email group, Japanese with Yuta. Alright, see you guys soon. Ciao, ciao!